Hello, I'm sorry I haven't done one of these in a while. I've been in university and things are taking a bit of a toll. I'm in the middle of writing a horoscript at the moment, so sorry. Um, I'm going to go back to saying that it's been a while since it came out um, and there's still a lot of different opinions going around here and there and my mind is not fresh so I'm going to do a proper review when the DVD comes out. I'm sorry for making you wait but that's the second of how it's going to be. Also I apologise for the fact that you can actually see my lapel mic. That is how I do such good audio. <laughs> um, so yeah, spoiler alert right there on my boob. Um, Okay, so for my dissertation I'm doing horror and I'm taking a look back at the original really scary creepy films Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Halloween, Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Friday the 13th Ironic because Friday the 13th has just gone by um, I wasn't that impressed with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I'm not gonna lie it wasn't what I was hoping it would be I was kind of hoping for something a little bit less screamy it was really quite just like the, the original like the first few minutes was amazing i really enjoyed it it was really good it was i was getting involved and then she just screamed for like 30 minutes straight at the end and by the end of by like <laughs> by five minutes she was just screaming i was just like can somebody please kill her i am fed up um, the storyline was good and I, I did enjoy the characters, the twist characters, the chainsaw, everything. Really good, but it, but the screaming at the end kind of ruined it for me. It was too much. It was so over the top. Nobody screams that much in real life. If someone's chasing you with a chainsaw, you just run. Screaming will tire you out. Most idiots know that. Anyway, I'm getting too passionate. Um, then Halloween, I really liked. Michael Myers is my bae, obviously. <laughs> no, I really did enjoy Halloween. I'd never seen it before. Boo on me. Um, I do feel ashamed that I've never seen these films before. I had seen quite a lot of uh, Japanese horror and Japanese remake horror. I hadn't really seen the originals, so I'm sorry. Um, it was good. I really liked Halloween. I really liked it. I loved the, I loved the psychologist. Okay, so I have now had to change uh, cameras because for some reason my video camera hates that wall. I might have to have that checked. Um, okay, so I'm sorry, the quality isn't as good on my laptop, which I am filming on, so I'm sorry. Um, anyway... When was I? Halloween. I really like the character of the psychiatrist. Uh, that his connection to Michael Myers and the way he seems to be his best friend is so intriguing. I really like it. It's um, it's almost like some kind of romance between or a bromance even. Like Michael doesn't even have to say anything, but the doctor still loves and still has this weird connection with Michael. And I think that's really, it, it's a, an amazing part of the storyline that I, I probably wouldn't have thought of. It's so good. Um, anyway, then there's Friday the 13th. Uh, it was good, but it wasn't anything special for me. It wasn't what I hoped it would be. I hoped it would be a little bit more. Um, I did like it. I liked the storyline. The first part, the first half, first hour maybe really had me captured. I was so interested, I loved the characters, I loved the mysteriousness, but what got me then was how at the end, once people started dying off, it just sort of became a chase, but without actually seeing the chasing, it just seemed to be her running quite a lot. And then her, be, her sort of being really unrealistic. It, did, it really did seem to be sort of breaching the world's expectations. But yeah, I did like Friday the 13th. I haven't seen the other ones yet, so don't, I can't really judge. Um, then what else we got? Uh, f yeah, finally, we have Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, I loved it. It was so good. Um, I'm actually going to include some information on it on my, in my dissertation. Because, oh, and my final major project as well. Because I found it so interesting the inclusion of dreams 
there was a part of it for me that felt it was like it was a little bit like Halloween crossed Donnie Darko for me the dream side of it was so intense and so it was so important and the fact they had to stay awake um, was it was so intense and you could feel it I was watching it and I started feeling tired I started feeling like the the urge to go to sleep but the urge to not go to sleep simultaneously like they were it was so interesting and I really really liked it um, I also loved Freddy I felt really conflicted when they were like oh my god we, you framed an innocent man and then they're like Oh, actually, he's not innocent, is he? He's actually this massive creep. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, but yeah, it did feel kind of Donnie Darko-ish for me, but crossed with Halloween, which is quite weird. And my favourite of the two was definitely Nightmare on Elm Street and then um, Halloween. I can't choose which is my favourite between the two, though. Um, interestingly, another film that I watched I only watched it last night. I've still got, I think, five minutes left, but I can kind of guess what's going to happen because most of that's going to be credits. Um, is House of Wax. That wasn't what I expected. I was kind of expecting it to be down the line of uh, House of a Thousand Corpses. I was expecting it to be like that, but it wasn't. It was... I don't know, the relationship between the characters, it felt really... Um, if the, the characters and the way they communicated felt a little bit like Friday 13th. But the guy's interest in the wax and everything and how it draws him in, it was like the wax was being seductive. I know that sounds really obscure and really sort of like, that's an object, that's strange. Uh, no, if, um, it, re it really felt... Um, I can't think of the word for it. I can't think of how to describe House of Wax to someone who hasn't seen House of Wax. It was... It was fascinating. It made you what, like interested in the wax. It made you... Um, it seduced you in the storyline. And how all of a sudden this whole town isn't real. It's all made up by the, these people. That that's such an intense and strange route to go down for a film like that i really wasn't expecting it and i really did enjoy it it didn't it didn't feel unnecessary in any way and there's lots of gore there are some jump scares like when i say jump scares i mean sort of like i think the gore is kind of the jump scares in a way like you don't expect it so it does make you jump um but it's just gore or it's just something that you won't see you wouldn't see coming uh, what other films have I watched? I've watched so many films. Uh, but yeah, I think a lot of these films are really good to watch, especially if you love horror. Um, I have been putting off watching them for a while. I shouldn't have, because I did really enjoy them. Apart from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, as I said, because uh, that was good, but it just tired me out after a while. It just felt exhausting. Her screaming in that film exhausted me. I've never felt so just <laughs> drained from watching a film. Um, I've been watching a few other films that haven't necessarily been horror. A film for me that um, my producer recommended to me was um, The Knowing. Now that isn't really a horror film, but in a way it is. Um, because there's so much like, there's the typical storyline of this person did this crazy thing when they were a kid and no one believed them, everyone thought they were crazy, everyone thought they were losing their mind. Um, yes, that is. Bed. And then you get the new ki the uh, kid in modern day who figures things out, blah 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 blah. But the addition of Nicolas Cage really kind of got me because I was expecting it to be a typical Nicolas Cage film. I was I was thinking sort of um, National Treasure when I saw the cover. And in a way, it is a little bit like National Treasure in the fact that he tries to figure everything out. But it's also not like National Treasure in the sense that th th it's actually kind of harrowing. The when he says that the no, I'm sorry, spoiler alert. Um, when he says that the sun is basically just going to blow all existence off the of planet Earth, and you sort of think, how the hell can they get around this? I know in films like Armageddon, when there was that problem with the asteroid, uh, they sent new people up. You know, they did training and everything. Nicolas Cage in this film doesn't have enough time to go send people up to the sun and that would be stupid anyway because you would not survive. 
Um, then there's things like Sunshine. I could go on. It doesn't, it doesn't exactly have a happy ending. And that's something I love about a film like that, is I, I hate it when films have unrealistic endings. I mean, it is nice, like, you can finish a film and be like, aww, that's so nice, it's so sweet to see that happen, it's so nice that they live. But that wouldn't happen in real life. Um, the thing I liked about The Knowing was, obviously, that it had really unrealistic ideas, you know, it had really sort of elaborate horror slash sci-fi kind of uh, mix-up. But I really enjoyed how it didn't have a happy ending. Now, I'm not saying that I want all films to be miserable, um, but I think it's nice to have that change, to have that factor of it's not ending well. There, there is not gonna, like, these characters aren't necessarily gonna live. Um, major spoiler alert now. Nicolas Cage does die in the film, um, but not everybody does die, there are survivors. And I'm not gonna tell you how, just in case you do like spoilers, I'm just gonna make there be at least one thing that isn't spoiled. I hope you've enjoyed my video and if you've got any film request or any information you'd like to share with me or if you'd even like me to review your film, give me a message down below. Bye! Okay, I am not sitting comfortably. Okay, so hello, this is like my third take. First a cat sat on me, second time I think a ghost interrupted me, uh, which is annoying, and uh, now this should be it. Okay, so it's been a while since the first IT film came out and I kind of, first IT film? Let's try that again. Um,